Okay, so we were mentioning uh, about using an external package for uh, handling dates, date objects. And uh, what we saw up to now is how to install the package with npm. And uh, the functions inside the package, the package are available through the import statement, okay? Uh, just remind, uh, if you want to use the import statement, uh, the easiest way is not the only one, but the easiest way is to use a, a file extension of MJS, uh, which, by the way, also sets uh, strict mode automatically. So one less uh, thing to bother, because import is only available in strict mode. Um, the statement for importing is like that, uh, import from DJS, DJS the name. So why does the JS happen twice? Because the second one in quotes, the string one, is the name of the package. The name of the directory, basically, where you are searching the, the information. And the first one is the, uh, a variable inside the JavaScript code that you use to access the imported information. Uh, we won't spend today time to uh, study the import statement because it's quite complex. You can import uh, one name, a, li a list of names, selective name, uh, asterisk, uh, or, uh, okay, let's, for today, we just need to import the, uh, the DJS library is available through one name, DJS, that is a function. So the package, importing the package defines a function. Through this function, you can create objects, uh, call methods, and then and so on. So we just need to import one name from one package, and that is the existing syntax. Then what can we do with that? Um, we can just create, with the calling, by calling the DJS function, we can create a new date object, and uh, without any, let's say, um, argument, it will just create uh, uh, the date of now. Uh, let's, let's see it in, in uh, it should also work interactively. I'm not 100% sure about that, but node from uh, import. DGS from DGS. No, it doesn't work, uh, okay. So we, sorry, I, we must put that into the program because it's still using the old syntax. Okay, oh, what I, I wrote here as a test uh, during the break is just you create a new DJS object uh, and just to see it uh, in the console. Uh, so let's run the program again. And all of this output, uh, but what we are concerned with, okay, it's a long one, is uh, this. This is the internal representation of a DGS object. Okay, D is the object that we printed, that we created there. We are printing it in the console. It's trying to show me all the fields of that object. Of course, we don't, of course, this is just a debug uh, uh, version. The document slides suggest we use uh, the format method on the object. So, for example, D.format, maybe. Not form data. D, D dot format. Maybe it's more readable. It prints it like this. In the standard ISO format, month dash, uh, sorry, year that month that days, capital letter T, and the time. 11, 55, 0, 0, and the time zone. So we have three fields, the date, the time, and the time zone. So a DJS object is uh, always time zone aware. Right now, the, the, the now found, the, 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 the normal constructor built an object in my current time zone, which is uh, plus one. But uh, uh, you can, of course, with that many parameters decide which they know, and do, when it does the comparison and so on, it takes into account of this, dif this time differences. So we have the many ways of creating a new date. The now, a specific date in several different formats. 
converting from a JavaScript internal uh, to a date object from the standard library or for the timestamp and so on. So this the, the easiest one is we, if I want to specify a date, I can use this syntax. And instead of storing it as a string, I store it as a DateJS object. From the database object, I can use format uh, for printing the standard ISO format or specify a pattern for creating what I want in the, in the format I want. Okay, so these are the two basic operations. For, this means that in our, <clears throat> in our uh, example, let's set this aside, when I create a new answer in the date of today, I just, uh, instead of storing it in uh, as a string, I can store it as an object. I'm creating a DJS object using by parsing the string. And the same was for the question. I can create a DJS object instead of a string. So when I try to execute this, uh, it will be much longer because in the date field of the question and also of the answers, instead of uh, just a string, uh, I have the full uh, rundown of the DJS object. Unfortunately, console.lock is quite, uh, in, uh, in, in output mode, is quite long. Uh, when we go to debug mode, it will be much uh, more compact, okay, if we, if we debug the program. Because you can, for example, just to see it, uh, we define a function. Let's try what, to see what, uh, when working with objects, it's better to work in debug mode. You just uh, Set a breakpoint, go to run and debug here. And so the debugger starts. We interact not in the terminal, but in the debug console. And what we see is that the DJS object here is displayed on the, sorry, on the watch. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to, okay, to minimize this. To increase that, I, okay. Working with this resolution is, <laughs> is quite difficult. Um, and so we have this, the representation of the object and then all the properties if you want. And also the console, the debug console is more intelligent because when we print something, okay, this, in this case it was just a string, we see when we print the object itself, what did they do? Ah, sorry, I stopped it. What are you doing? So, extension, what are you saying? Is this my fault? So, okay, step, step, step. Okay, I have something with the debugger today that doesn't like me. It's just running, when I do a step, it just, was just running up to the end, so I don't know why. Anyway, every demo goes in this way. Um, okay, so why do we need the JS? It's not so, sorry for the debugger issue, but um, we can, uh, set or read uh, uh, different parts of the uh, dot minute, dot date, uh, different parts of the date. We can extract the value, the current value. No? For example, if you write now dot date without any parameter, we will we'll return the date. If we set a parameter, if you give a parameter, it will set the date. So we'll get or set according to whether we pass or not uh, an argument to the function, which is quite common in the JavaScript world. And we have all the arithmetics of the dates. So we can add them, subtract, uh, and uh, compare the differences, uh, uh, compare before, same, after, and so on, between the dates. And so all the data arithmetic uh, 
Never do that yourself. If you want to compute the date for tomorrow, you just uh, add one day. If you want to compare two dates, uh, use is before and so on, so that it will take into account of all the mm, difficult issues about uh, time zone, leap years, uh, and the uneven month, uh, and whatever uh, strange things uh, happen to our calendars. Okay? So the, the, my suggestion is never use, uh, never do arithmetic manipulation by yourselves on time or date values. Always use the libraries. They are there and they are easy, basically easy to use. Right? Uh, and then the JS already has the basic arithmetic uh, that we need uh, and uh, it may have plugins to install other uh, additional functionalities that you just have to install and require or import uh, in your project. This is something that you can uh, just read the documentation whenever you need something, and it's very easy to read. Okay, that was a, 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 um, a motivation for, for, for introducing the packages. Um, I have one last hour question from before, from the hour before. How do I discover the type of an object? Uh, actually, there are there's a, on every object, there's a property called constructor that points to the object function. It's not the string, but the object itself. Or an instance of operator that uh, can check whether or not uh, this object is an instance of a class or a constructor function. Okay? Uh, usually, these kind of checks uh, are not encouraged. Uh, Usually you define a function and you assume when you're in your code that, uh, or you check or assume that uh, the objects that are given to you contain the methods that you, or the properties that you need to call on them. So in JavaScript we tend to use the, what is called the duck typing, okay? Uh, uh, the importance of an object passed to a function is uh, whether it has the actual methods that you need. So normally, instead of checking for a type with the instance of, we check for methods. If we need to call the add, uh, I don't know, uh, add method on, a, on an object, here we are going to do add. If I want to be sure that Q1 is a right type of object, I just check if the add method is defined. If Q1.add. If it's undefined, then it's not the right object for me. But if it has an add method, okay, whether it's a question or is something else, uh, if I only need to call add on that, uh, any object that defines the add method is fine with me. No, you know the proverb, the duck typing stands for uh, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it should be a duck. So you don't care if it's really a duck as long as it's able to walk and quack in the right way. So as long as it's that, possess the right methods that you're expecting to call. Hmm. So normally we are trying to focus more on which methods uh, should the objects uh, have in order to work in this context rather than which type were they defined of. Even because many types, uh, many times, uh, unfortunately, when we will exchange information from the server to the client, uh, we are sort of losing the types because we are converting to string and then rebuilding objects from strings, from JSON, and the type information goes away, hmm? but the, the, the properties still remain. Okay, so it's a basic of, of programming style. Of course, if you are building a library, maybe you want to be more careful about what kind of object you receive. If you are writing some code that uses li libraries, uh, usually you try to no, not care too much about this. Um, okay, let's move one step forward. No, don't be afraid from the title asynchronous. Uh, mm, uh, the asynchronous will be for next week. Uh, but today we are uh, building one further step, uh, again on functions. First of all, it's one uh, simple extension to what we know. We already know that functions are created and returned to functions, stored into properties, and so on. Functions can also be passed uh, as arguments to other functions. Nothing special. Uh, and this allows us to create uh, um, 
to when I call a function, and this function should do something customized for me. To specify this customization, one very easy way is to give to this function one my extra function that does the custom things. Uh, it's easier to see as a, with examples. So, um, imagine I have this function create quote, okay? That uh, creates a quote with a slogan at the right, and then does something. Needs to do something with this quote. Maybe print it, maybe store it in the database, maybe encrypt it, or whatever. So I want, in a way, to separate uh, the creation of the quote, putting together the quote, uh, from the operation that we do on that. Imagine maybe this quote creation is something that may also take time. It may be a long process or whatever. So what, can, what they can do is to create a function that receives the text that they want to quote, and then a function that tells what they want to do with that quote. So the body of this create quote uh, in this case, creates the quote itself uh, with uh, the argument that I, did, that I passed. Uh, this is just a string uh, interpolation. And then calls this second argument, callback, uh, which is a function argument. So I'm saying, okay, do this quoting and then call this function. And it will create a quote and then call this function with the result of the previous operation. This function is not just imagine that this create quote is in a library, so it doesn't know your code. It knows that after doing the complex operation, it should call this call function that takes the name of a callback function. And give you a callback that you promise to call me back. And I'm creating this function. What do I want to do with the, with the new quote? I just want to print it. So something that locks the argument. So I'm giving, I'm giving to this function, create quote, the reference to another function that when called will just, in this case, lock the argument. If I want to encrypt it or to throw it into the database, we just need to define a different function here and pass that the name, name always, never call it, the name of the function as the second parameter. So it's quite common no, to have uh, uh, JavaScript functions that receive some parameters to do their work and then some one or more functions that they will call in the right moments. Uh, one very famous one is sort. If we want to sort an array, we saw last time that by default sort uh, compares the elements as strings. If we don't want the default behavior, we can customize it. And by customize it, it means giving to the sort function a callback function that it will use, it will use to compare every couple of elements, every pair of elements, whenever it needs, whenever the alg sorting algorithms need to do a comparison. So I'm calling the sort method on an array of numbers by giving as argument uh, using the function expression or the arrow expression is the same. Maybe the arrow is more readable. A function that requires, takes two parameters, the two elements to compare, and returns one value, which may be negative, zero, or positive, depending on whether the first argument should come before, after, or is the same as the other. In the case of number, it's just subtraction, A minus B. So for sorting an array of numbers, we must, if we don't want it to be sorted as strings, uh, we must provide uh, a comparison function. Uh, it may remind you of Java comparators, right? But in Java, you have to create a class and implement a method and create an instance of the class, uh, a lot of lines of code just to say, make a subtraction. And this is just uh, you, uh, the same effect uh, used with functions. Function giving as parameters. So I am not calling, they are called, they're sold, they're called callbacks because I'm not calling them. I'm defining the function and giving you the function 
and you will call it back when you need it, one or more times, depending on what you do. Do I want it to sort in reverse order? Okay, it will be by B minus A. Do you want to sort uh, even numbers before the old numbers? Okay, that becomes a bit more complex, but it can be done. Maybe I, I can, it doesn't fit into one line anymore, and it's one if. Doesn't care. We know that it's sort, we call this function every time it has to decide whether to swap two elements or not. That's it. And then we give the, the logic of the comparison to it. Hmm? So it's very, very common, and you see why the arrow function is useful. Uh, because it's still readable. We are creating a function, passing it there, and so on, in a much more readable format than this. Uh, otherwise, uh, okay, if this function is longer, you have a lot of instructions here that don't belong to this body, but belongs to the callback. But then it's just a matter of, read of readability of the code, okay? The semantic is exactly the same. So instead of defining a function, giving it a name, and so on, we just use a narrow anonymous function here and there. These, these are called synchronous callbacks because the function is called synchronous. So inside the execution, during the execution of sort, this function is called many times, one or more times. Okay. Uh, Things will be much more fun when we deal with asynchronous callbacks uh, where the function executes, uh, and after the function execu we execute it, uh, and you're doing something else in your program, your callback will be called in an unpredictable times. But that will be fun when we, next week, for next week. Um, and uh, synchronous callbacks uh, enable the definition of all the functional, pro, uh, functional programming uh, primitives. So a lot of operations on arrays are implemented in the standard library by giving us methods of the array object that require one callback to do any sort of operation on the, on the array itself. Uh, for, what, for example, filter. Filter is a, a method of array, so it can be called on any array object. What does it do? It takes uh, the array and the only filters, it creates a new array that only contains uh, some elements that match some criteria. All the elements that are greater than 12 or the elements that are even all the elements uh, that are uh, longer string than 20 characters, you name it. So how do you name it? Okay, you name it as the callback of the filter method. So you have array, dot filter, and parentheses callback. So what does it do? It takes the, uh, the array one element at a time, and for each element it calls the your filter function with that argument and uh, decide whether you turn true or false, uh, decide whether to uh, include this element in the final array, in the result, or not, or, or to drop it, okay? So for example, here we are filtering all the objects uh, uh, with a callback function that receives uh, the object itself, one, two, three objects, it's a list of objects, and uh, as an argument, and the, the, the return value is a Boolean comparison, whether the var, the variation attribute of this object is uh, less than zero. And it returns a new array with a subset of the elements. All these functional methods always return new arrays. They never modify the initial array. No, this is one of the cornerstones of functional programming. You compute operations, and every time you return a new value, you never modify, you never have side effects. Huh? Um, and so, what are the other methods? The idea is that uh, um, we are a set of methods that allow us to do basic operations onto arrays, and they can be combined quite easily. All of these uh, methods uh, have a 
same structure. So they take an array, they are methods of array. So they take an array object, they take one callback, and therefore, depending on the type of operation, this callback is applied to every element of the array, and the result is returned as a new array. They all have the same structure. And in this case, the filter methods behave like this. Like, I'm creating a new array. I'm iterating over the different arrays of the first array, the different elements of the first array. And for each of them, for each element, I'm calling the filter function. If the filter function tells me true, I will push the element into the new array. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything. So all these three operations, sorry, there's a mistake. This is here is called array, and here is called list. It should be the same. It should be array here, OK? Instead, of, this name should be identical to this one. Um, instead of writing a for loop in this way, which is conceptually a trivial thing, we already have in mind as a, as a primitive operation. I need to filter them out. We need to write uh, four lines of code. Filter makes the same, allows us to reason at a higher level. Hmm? I want to filter out, out some elements according to some criteria. And uh, uh, this, of course, works uh, because uh, you know, functions are, can be created easily with the arrow uh, syntax and can be passed around the parameter, all of what we are building up, up to this moment. Hmm? Um, the idea is that uh, in JavaScript, JavaScript is not a functional language. There are languages that are strongly built into the functional programming paradigm. JavaScript just supports it well, thanks to the, uh, uh, the behavioral functions, which are first class citizen in the language, it's not just some hack uh, that we do with other languages. So uh, you feel you know, good uh, well why, by using functional programming in JavaScript, even if you can use also other programming styles like normal imperative programming and so on. Nothing prevents you from doing a, a, a for cycle or for to modify the, to have side effects in a function. But also functional programming is quite useful. And basically, we are, there's a slide here where we said, ah, what, how do I process the element of an array? And the answer was, use a for cycle. Now uh, we can learn uh, how to use the functional methods uh, for doing iterations, but not just iterating over an element, but doing something with them. And basically, these are the functional methods of array that we can use. Each of them takes uh, f as an argument. And f is a function, is a callback function, where we can specify what we want for each for example, the for each method calls the function f for each argument. And so you want to do something for each argument. Instead of writing a for element of array, you just write for each array dot for each, and then in parentheses you write the function to do something. It doesn't return any new value. It just does something to the object. Are you print them, for example? There are uh, Boolean functions that check an expression for every element. And uh, they will tell you if uh, every element satisfies the predicate expression or at least one element. So these are substitutes from when you're looping over an array to compute a flag, true or false. At least one, use some. All of them, use every. And so all the iteration is done for you. What you, you only have to write, uh, we only have to write the comparison function, the check function. Uh, then we see some examples. And uh, more complex is uh, our okay, filter that creates a, a subset of the original array with the element that match an, uh, an expression, or map that creates a new array with the same length for every Previous element, it creates a new element uh, by applying the function to that specific element. So for example, you have a, an array of number. You want to create an array of the, the same number squared. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It will become one, four, 
9, 16, 25. You are building a new array with the same number of elements, and one by one, we are transforming map one element from the previous value to a new value. Let's see some examples. Um, for example, here we're saying we are using for each to iterate over, um, this is an array created from a string with a spread operator again at work. We're spreading the character of, a, of, a, of an array, of a string, sorry, into the elements of an array. And for each letter, we are doing something, which in this case is uh, uh, concatenating them into an uppercase version of the same letter. This will be, of course, useless because we already have the uppercase method, but we, we could uh, apply to uppercase to the whole string, but just an example. By the way, what we are seeing here that this function is using a closure on uppercase. So the body on the inner function is modifying an external then this closure is forgot, uh, forgotten because we are not returning the, the function itself. No? But, so it will be lost, uh, will be forgotten after the, after the end of this call. But it's quite normal no, to have an inner function using some variable which doesn't belong to it. Um, for which is not very used. Every uh, checks whether all the elements of an array hold some property. For example, every x is less than 10 in the array A, so it will take one by one the elements of A, substitute them for x, and will be the one less one. One is less than 10, 2 is less than 10, 3 is less than 10, and so on. And if all of these return true, then every returns true. If at least one returns false, then every returns false. And we stop as soon as, of course, uh, uh, it finds the answer. So it's a loop with a flag. But we don't have to worry the loop nor the flag. Just the array and the condition. Say sum is the reverse, it's uh, at least one. If at least one element uh, satisfies the property, then it's true. So it stops at the first uh, element that satisfies, and it's false only if all of them fail. It's just a complement. More interesting are map and filter. They're more used also. Map is transforming an array onto another array. So the, the basic role of map is it will always return, it will always create an array of the same length as the first one. That's the rule number one. <laughs> and the elements of the new array will be the transformation one by one of the elements of the previous array. So if you have 27 elements, you call map, you will have a new array with 27 elements. And each of them will be computed only starting from the corresponding element of the first array. So, for example, an array of squared elements, squared elements uh, or maybe an array only with the uh, scores. For example, in our code, no, we have the, uh, let's take the scores last, that we had uh, last week. No, sorry, no, no, we don't have enough. We don't have enough objects to do this. The, 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 Right, we can write it here. Q1 is a question, okay? And if you want to know just the, the scores of, of the answers, just them as numbers, uh, we, we could write just scores. What do we want to do? We want to take the first answer and extract this, the score property, and then the second object, and then extract the score property, and put all of them into an array. Then we can sort it, we can compute the average or whatever, okay? So we can do that by taking the list of answers. Qn that answers is an array. And map transform every answer A, which is an object of type answer, and I only, I only get from that object the score attribute. 
It was called call, right? Let me check. Yeah, score. So for every, you iterate over all the answers of question one, which is an array, and for each of them, it will take the array object, extract one attribute, and create an array with only the value of this attribute. In this case, we only have one, but we can try to see it. You see, we have an array with on one, on one integral number, which is six. Okay, from a list of objects to a list that contains one specific property of those objects. So we are, can use it to extract some information that we, all, that we want to work on, or conversely, you can create an object starting from some basic operation. Right? No, you can do anything you want. As long as there's a one-to-one -one mapping from the old to the new value, you can create it. And filter is the dual. It extracts only a subset of elements, so the, the array returned by filter, they always return new arrays, okay? The array returned by filter contains uh, less, or up to the same number, but less elements uh, than the original array, but these elements are identical to the ones that we had before. So it never changes a value, it only shortens the array. Map never shortens the array, but it changes the value. Filter never changes the value, and it will shorten. So put together, they combine together, you, know, you can usually have a, a subset of elements uh, processed in some way you like. And uh, you also see filter to select some element with the condition. By the way, uh, the argument uh, of the callback so the argument of filter is a callback function. This callback function takes arguments. The first and normal argument is the element itself that is being iterated over. But uh, this function actually gives me two arguments. And the second one is the index. So you have both the value and its index, 0, 1, 2, 3. So I can decide whether to include the element based on its value or based on its position in the array. So in this case, we are only taking the elements that are in the even position, 0, 2, 4, regardless of their value. The value of elements is not used here, only this index. So you can do some sort of sophisticated values. And the third uh, um, primitive for functional programming is uh, reduce, which takes an array and returns one value. Think of uh, summing a set of values. You compute, start from zero, you sum, you accumulate the sum of all the elements, and at the end you have only one value. But this value is computed by combining together all the values of all the elements that you saw. Okay? So it returns one result that can be a number, can be an object, uh, depends on what you want to do. And so the callback is a function that contains at least two parameters. Uh, because imagine the, the doing the sum of an element. Okay? You have sum equal to sum plus current element. So at every iteration, you have the old value, and you need to update it with a new value. So the callback receives the old value of the result that we are computing and the current element. And it does something to compute the new value. Huh? Um, for example, I have an array of numbers. I want to compute the sum of these numbers. So what do I need to do at every step? At every step, I should take the partial sum plus the current element, and this would be the new partial sum. And so I have the callback that receives the partial sum, the new value. I will return the sum of the partial sum and the new value. Of course, a partial sum should start from zero, should have a starting value. 
and this starting value is the second argument of reduce. This is a bit more complex. Reduce has two arguments here. One is the callback function that updates the running counter. And the second argument, the second argument is an argument of reduce, it's not an argument of the callback, is the start value of the accumulator. So I'm saying accumulator is equal to zero. The first argument. Then for each element, I'm executing accumulator equal to accumulator plus current value. It's a sum. Or you can do the product. In this case, uh, the update of the accumulator will be a multiplication, and the starting value should be one. Or a maximum. Uh, I take uh, the current, current max, maximum, the current element, and I compare whether the current maximum is greater than the current uh, element, then the current maximum is still a valid maximum. Otherwise, the current value will be the new current maximum. Huh? So from a list of elements, uh, we, are, we can extract the largest one. Or the smallest one if you have uh, less than here. Here, we, de we don't uh, have the initial value. The initial value will be undefined, so the first time uh, we, we return the first value. So that uh, at the, when, we've, when we see the first element, we will, uh, uh, this condition will be false because it will be accumulator greater than undefined. It's false. So with any expression with undefined becomes false. And so we'll take the false branch of this expression. This is one uh, example of why we, uh, I mentioned uh, in the first week uh, that the ternary operator, question mark, colon, is useful in JavaScript. Uh, and it's, it's uh, not very readable, not very nice, uh, but for doing this kind of inline stuff, uh, it comes very handy. Of course, you can replace it with a pair, pair of braces and a proper if statement. But for smaller things like this, uh, don't try to embed complex logic with inline uh, stuff like that. But simple logic can actually have simple solution in this case. Hmm? OK, here's a, here's, a, here's a simple picture of saying map uh, takes a set of elements uh, and returns the same number of elements but transformed in some way. Filter takes a bunch of elements and only selects those that have some common property. Um, every means that or sum. Uh, if uh, some, are, some of them are squares, yes, and so it's true. Every of them are squares, no, because this one is a round, right? it's a circle, and so on. Um, and there, there are also other methods I like find that uh, give me the first element that, that satisfies some, uh, some operation, like filter, and then give me only the first one that fits, that fits okay, that fits true. Okay. If, if I only want one, the first square, I can use find. If I want all the squares, I use filter. But then the criteria is the same. No? It's a criteria for, for finding an element. Um, so how does it relate to our, um, yeah, to our example? OK, in our exercise, we have some additional functionality to implement. Uh, especially in the question object. So we already had the add method. And here it's telling me, find username, return all the answers of a given person. OK, so imagine that a question has many answers. They can be from different people. And we can, uh, we can only select those from the person that we want, we care. This is the find method. For doing that, uh, the, the suggestion here is creating one question with at least four answers. Right now, we only have one answer. Uh, it's not very useful. So let's add uh, three more stupid answers. So it could be, if you don't care, I will remove some prints uh, to have some cleaner output. OK. OK, 
okay okay so we created one question at the beginning one answer and we added to the question so we had some other two or three questions uh, so answer sorry q1.add new answer we don't need to pass through a const variable we just can create the answer that uh, maybe And uh, maybe it's this, uh, this one again for me. No, uh, no, uh, Luigi, say. The AJS today, now. Then I have uh, the solid parameter for, no, sorry, the score, zero. Then another q1.add, new answer. Uh, the response is uh, no, and uh, the I'm, I'm the submitter. Score minus two. I never like my neg negative stuff. And then the JS uh, yesterday, 2024, 3, 12. Finally, new answer. Uh, undecided. And then it's Luigi, score of zero because it's neutral, and date again today, I don't know. Okay, so that's, we created our little database. And then we want to implement the method called find by username. Okay, good. Inside question, this point of find, this dot find, takes a username and returns a list of answers. Okay, it takes a username and returns, let's read it again, all the answers, so a list of answers object. And this is easy because we just have to take the list of answers which is an array, and filter them so that for a given answer, we just check whether the uh, user is equal to user. Equal, sorry. Okay, so these are the answers are all the answers for this question. I want to return a subset of this list, of this array. So I can use a filter. And for each of them, for each answer, I'm asking myself, the user property of that answer, is it equal to the string that I received as an argument? So A is a reference to the answer. A dot user is a property local to the answer object, while this user is uh, the argument of the function. It's not the argument of the filter function, but the argument of the find function. Okay, we have a find method that is a user. If you write, if you see it write down, uh, written down as function. Syntax is function, find, argument, user. Inside of this, we are defining a small callback function that receives one argument of its own, A, the answer, and is able to read through a closure the argument of the enclosing function, which is find, and this argument will be user. So I'm comparing a local variable, a property of local variable, with an external variable user. Okay? User is an argument of find. A is an argument of the callback. The callback itself is an argument of filter. I can offer you coffee for the, okay, at age uh, later on.
It's a way of seeing things in a different way, okay? But JavaScript is a lot, a lot like that. Once you, we get the gist of this, it will be easy. Hmm? We have three functions in a row. Find, filter, and arrow. Each with their own arguments and which, which, which is wrong in a different moment, okay? If we try to build our mental model, it will be easy. And it will be a lot of repeated code. There's some, there are some patterns that repeat every time. But we see how compact it is for simple operations, of course. Another requirement for our text is uh, after date, returns an array of answers after the given date. Oh, okay, this is the same. This is the same as before. What it changes is only the, the selection function, the selection, the selection property. Instead of comparing what I'm doing with the mouse, instead of comparing with the username, I'm comparing with the date. So the other method would be this dot uh, my memory after date, which is a function that receives a parameter of type uh, date. We can call it date. And uh, returns again a, a filtered set of answers. This, dot answers, dot filter, A. And now here we have just to write a Boolean expression telling me whether the, a, the date of A is uh, after the date uh, argument to the method. I want to check whether to only to retain, to return those dates where A the date is uh, uh, after after date, so we must go to our friend DJS and uh, is after or is same of after. It doesn't tell, the C is same of after. And uh, no, it requires a plugin to work. No, no, okay. Let's use is after. Is after. One DJS object, dot is after, another DJS object. Then, by the way, is after can also set the granularity of the comparison. Do you want to compare at the second, the millisecond, or just at the month level? But we don't need that in line now. So I want to retain this if the date of the answer is after, then the date that I received as a parameter. Uh, do we want to make it also for today, for the same date? Uh, we saw that uh, there's also a method like is same or after, but it requires a plugin. We don't want uh, to install that. Uh, okay, but you are able <laughs> to do that with is after and is same. So is the same or after? We can make it. I don't know. Okay, the um, the condition here will be a bit more complex. Okay, or uh, date is after, the, uh, uh, the date of A is after the cutoff date, or the date is same as the date. Uh, the arrow operator has a very low priority, okay? So the parentheses, we may make them explicit, why not? It's better to have a couple of parentheses more, okay? So this is take one argument A and return this expression. It's a Boolean expression that combines two comparisons. And this result uh, will uh, filter out the element. And the return value of filter, remember, is always an array. An array with a subset of the element. So we are creating a function that returns a Boolean to enable filter to return an array. All the work is done by filter, we are just giving the hint to filter or what to filter on, or what criteria to filter on. Okay, that was easy. Another 
list by date, uh, returns an array of answers sorted by increasing date. That's Victor. Does it say sort uh, the uh, answers by date? No. It doesn't say to change the order of the answers inside the object. It says it returns a list of answers. Don't touch the original ones. So what he's saying here is make a copy of the answers and sort them. Sort the copy, don't touch them. Okay? So we, we must recognize here that we must return a sorted list, okay, sorted array, that's not, not difficult, but it should be a copy. We should not touch the original list of arrays. So we cannot write uh, um, this dot answers dot sort. Let's first make a, make a copy. Okay, that, we can do that. So uh, where's the code here? In this case, uh, we have the method that is called list by date. Okay, list by date. Uh, okay, it takes, uh, doesn't take any parameter, right? And it returns something which is, which requires two or three instructions to build. First, we need to make a copy and then sort them and then return it. So we need a body of our function. Hmm? So in this case, <laughs> it's not just a one-liner anymore, it's a two-liner. So we must be explicit in the body of the arrow function. If you want, you can also write equal function instead of the arrow, if you like. It will take more space, but this, in this case, it should be. So what do we have to do? We have to create one local copy, throwaway copy of the array of answers. Const answers equal to this dot answers. I use spread because it's the quickest way of making a copy of an array. And then we sort this one, answer.sort. And sort requires a callback with the um, sorting criteria. What's the sorting criteria again? Sorted by increasing date. So I should return a number that is negative if the first date is lower than the second, positive uh, uh, if the second, if the first one is greater, is later than the second, and zero if they are the same. Uh, in the JS, um, we can't really use these uh, methods, is before, is after, or we could use them, but they return a Boolean value. I need to return a negative null or positive number, not a true or false. Okay, so what I could do is, uh, if uh, is before, return minus one. If is after, return plus one, else return zero. That works, right? Or maybe we just, uh, let's see. Millisecond, no, I, if I get a number just, the, the, the old friend, the Unix timestamp, I can I get it, I don't have it here, maybe, query. I'm not parsing. I want to I want to see the, the parsing but not the display. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, this is a trick that says given a date, 
call the value of method and it will return me an integer number corresponding to the milliseconds. And so we can compare this number and make the difference between these two instead of making three ifs. It's the same, okay, I'm, I'm being lazy in this morning. So let's implement it either way. In any case, I have two dates, date one and date two. As a callback function, A must return an expression that computes the difference between date one dot value of minus day two dot value of. This should do the trick. I take the dates, convert them to a milliseconds, and compare, do the difference between them. So if the first milliseconds is sooner than the second, then it will, the difference will be negative, and so on. Or let's see also the other solution. T1, D2, let's do the comparison one by one, if, uh, if, and so on, okay? We can do that, uh, no problem. We, ne we must, of course, we have uh, three cases. We have an if with three exits, so we need a body of this function. Where we say that if uh, D1 is before, is before, what's the method, sorry? Yeah, is before is before then t, d2, then return minus one. As if d1 is after, then d2, then return plus one. As, re, no, remove, return zero. Zero. Hmm? They should do the same. Of course, in the second case, I have to have some statements, uh, and so I need a, a body with braces. Just remember that this is the body of this callback, and we are inside the body of that callback. Hmm? So if you look at the end, you get... Uh, a bit of nose there because you have the closing brace of the callback, the closing parenthesis of the sort argument list, and then the closing break of the other callback and so on. Uh, always be careful when you open a brace, close it immediately and then insert it because otherwise you, you, lost, you, you, you lose track of the, of the number of parentheses that have to be closed. So this one uh, plays a trick with the values. This one is more explicit. Uh, it takes more space, but the idea is the same. Filter wants a, a, a function that returns true or false. Sort uh, requires a callback that returns negative, novel, null, or positive. So we must have that, of course, to the specification that we need. And the last requirement was the same, but, but listing by score, which is much easier because score is already an integral number, right? Should be already an integral number. And so, sorry, again, uh, here, here, this dot, dot list by score is a method that returns, uh, well, again, we must work on a copy. Hmm? But we can make the copy. I don't want to tell you or teach you bad habits, OK? But uh, this dot answers dot filter. So I'm making a copy. I don't need to call it a variable, call it a name. I just use the variable to apply filter. OK, the spread operator creates a new array. So this new array, oh, sorry, I need to sort it first, sort. This would be a nice idea, huh? except that sort doesn't re return any value. 
the sort function returns undefined. So it will create a copy, it will sort it, but I have no way of returning the, the array, that copy. Uh, because if I do a return here, this is a return statement, it will return the, the return value of sort, which is undefined. So nice trick, it doesn't work. So we really have to, to create a, a, fun, um, a body of here. And do an intermediate variable with just the purpose of returning it, which is a noble purpose. Const answer is, uh, and then return answer. And in the middle, we just have to sort it, like we did before. So always be careful about what you need to return. In this case, we have uh, um, A1, A2, and we sort them according to okay, there's a bug in the code before, sorry. Um, the score, so A1 dot score less than minus A2 dot score. Uh, there's a bug here because, uh, sorry, A is, a, is an answer, A dot date is compared with another date. It's okay. This one is okay. This one is not because D1 and D2 are not dates, uh, but they are answers, objects. So it's not D1, it should be answer1, answer2, and then answer one dot date dot value of. Okay, we are just writing code, we need to debug it, of course, but. Uh, okay, answer is a list of answers. So the objects uh, passed here are objects of uh, this array. And since we are comparing the dates, we need to extract the date property from the answer object. Okay, and this, the same here. This is answer one, answer two, and we must uh, answer one dot date is before answer two dot date. And the same is here, a one dot date, a two dot date. Okay, this needs to be debugged, okay? So I am committing it right now, but uh, maybe I, I need to change it or correct some, some bugs that may have happened here, as always. Hmm? So this was just an example of using callbacks and functional programming to implement basic methods, basic manipulation methods over lists or arrays of, of, of values, which is very common, by the way. And it saves a lot of code compared to loops and other types of. Uh... Just remember the rule number one of uh, functional programming is never modify your arguments. Are you stretching or do you have a question? Okay, sorry, because I don't see you very well. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. I, I, don't, I don't get the answer. Maybe we are closing the, can you come down and just uh, speak uh, together? I, I'm not really, I'm not really hands. Uh. Here? Well, okay, because uh, uh, otherwise we would modify the question object. If you're sorting, if I'm doing uh, this dot answer dot, dot sort, I'm modifying the question object. I'm reordering the elements in the source array. I only modified the copy. Uh, the, the Okay, yeah?
because this, this A is the elements of the array. That other user? A is an answer, a user is the property. Yes, it's an answer because it, it's applied on these answers already. A is an answer, A.user is the user property of the answer object. This dot user. Yes? Yes? Yep. Okay. No problem. Okay, so you remember that this Thursday we have the first lab and we see each other next Tuesday. Hmm? And expect some more bugs and let's discuss them on Telegram if you want.